Hey everyone, welcome to our worship service again. Glad that you can join our Cornerstone English worship service for today. And if you're new or this is your first time watching us, uh, we're glad that you can join us and we pray that you will have a, a great time of worship with us, that you would experience the grace of God here today. And if you would like to get more information about our church, you can go visit our church website at cornerstonesomerset.org. And you can check out all of our announcements, all of our info, and um, you can get all your information that you need on that website. So please check it out. And so to start our worship for today, I will be bringing us into prayer. So please bow your heads with me. Gracious and loving Father, we pray that you will bless this time of worship that, Lord, we can come into your presence and experience your grace, even though uh, we cannot gather together as one body in a physical space, Lord. We are here on this online and virtual space, and we pray that you will fill us up with your spirit and remind us again of your goodness and your love, Lord. So, God, we pray for the gospel to come into our hearts and, and, and pierce our hearts, Lord. Help us to uh, know what it means to follow you, to love you, to repent of our sins, and to trust in Jesus Christ fully, Lord. So, God, we pray for you to anoint this time of worship, and may you be glorified here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Morning, Cornerstone. Glad you can join us again today. Let's give God the praise that he deserves, the God of creation, the God of our salvation. Decided, I have resolved to wait upon you, Lord. My rock and redeemer, shield and reward, I'll wait upon you, Lord. As surely as the sun will rise, you'll come to us. Certain as the dawn appears, you'll come. Let your glory fall as you respond to us. Spirit rain, flood into our thirsty hearts again. You'll come. And you'll come. And we are not shaken. We are not moved. We wait upon you, Lord. Mighty deliverer, triumph and truth. We wait upon you, Lord, as surely as the sun will rise, you'll come to us, certain as your word endures, you'll come, let your glory fall as you respond to us, Spirit rain. Blood into our thirsty hearts again. You'll come, and you'll come. And chains be broken, lies be healed, eyes be. Christ is revealed, and you'll come, let your glory fall as you respond to us, Spirit rain, flood into our thirsty hearts. 
once again. Your come and your come. Let your glory fall as you respond to us. Spirit rain, flood into our thirsty hearts again. Your come and your come. Worthy, you are worthy. Calling me to lay aside the worries of my day To quiet down my busy mind and find a hiding place Worthy You are worthy I open up my heart and let my spirit worship yours. I open up my mouth and let a song of praise come forth. Worthy, you are worthy. You call me to lay aside the worries of my day Quiet down my busy mind To find a hiding place Worthy You are worthy I open up my heart And let my spirit worship yours Open up my mouth and let a song of praise come forth. Worthy, you are worthy. Worthy, you are. Childlike faith, and a mighty honor is praised, a mighty honor shame of love. And of a holy life, and a mighty sacrifice, a mighty honor shame of love. And of a childlike faith, and a my honest praise, a my honest love, and of a holy life, and a my sacrifice, a my honest love, and of a childlike faith, and a my honest praise. My unashamed love, and of a holy life, and of my sacrifice, of my unashamed love, worthy you are worthy. You are worthy.
Hello again, Cornerstone. This is Pastor Paul again, and we're going to just spend this time praying together before the Lord, um, just to bring our corporate requests to him and ask him to bless our church. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you again for this time of worship, and we just pray that you continue to help Cornerstone, Cornerstone to, to grow, Lord, in our faithfulness to you, grow in our understanding of you, and that, Lord, we would all be servants of you, seeking to glorify your name and to expand your kingdom here in this earth. So, Lord, help us to be able to make disciples and to be a disciple-making community, Lord, to be able to uh, make disciples in our, uh, for our, in our, to our neighbors and to the communities around our, our church facilities as well. Lord, help us to expand your kingdom and to have people know your name. So, Lord, give us that heart and courage to go out and to share the gospel so that others can can know who you are. And, Lord, we just pray for wisdom as we seek to reopen our church facilities in the future, Lord. Lord, give us wisdom in how we can do that, how we can proceed, how we can be cautious and safe as well to those who are vulnerable in our community. So, Lord, uh, give us wisdom, Lord. Give us understanding and give us grace in how we can do these things, Lord, because we want to do them right. We want to do them well. And so, Lord, truly help us and may we be led by you and your spirit in this uh, endeavor as we seek to find ways to meet together either at, at our church facilities or in small group settings or in other ways, Lord. Uh, give us uh, a way to do that, Lord, in the future because, Lord, we still want to meet together in person, Lord. We see the importance of that as a church community. But, Lord, uh, help us to find the right ways to do that and to be cautious in how we do that as well. And, Lord, we also just think about uh, our, our future ministries. Lord, we think about VBS coming up in August. Lord, we pray that we will have uh, people volunteering and many of our uh, children can sign up as well and that it can be a, a time of blessing and encouragement for our children and our families, Lord. So, God, pray, we pray for our VBS and we lift it up to you that you would bless it and that you would uh, work through our church through this great opportunity that we have. And Lord, uh, we also just want to lift up our missionaries, Lord, and especially this week, we want to lift up Tim and Faith Brendan in Brazil as they continue to um, lead a Christian camp over there. And we pray that you would continue to help them to have opportunities to make disciples of Jesus Christ and help them in Brazil uh, with the coronavirus as well as they are uh, suffering, many of them are suffering as well in Brazil. So, Lord, uh, bring healing upon that land and bring grace upon them as well. So, Lord, we bring these requests before you and ask you to help us and bless us and, and help our church community to, to live for you and to live for Christ and, and help our missionaries all around the world continue to proclaim your great name as well. So, Lord, continue to work in us, use us, and may we continue to worship you here today as your body, as the body of Christ, as Cornerstone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Cornerstone. Today's scripture reading will come from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. 
For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For ye know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, and he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoke, spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain, Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, Cornerstone. I hope you all had an enjoyable 4th of July weekend celebration. I know that some of you gathered at Carl Gao and Emily Ho's house. Um, a few of you gathered, and it was exciting to me and encouraging to know that some of you are, some of us in Cornerstone are venturing out and gathering together, of course, practicing the guidelines of wearing masks and keeping the social distance. So that's great. Hopefully we can do this more and more safely. Today we continue in our series uh, in this New Testament letter called Hebrews. And last Sunday, Pastor Paul spoke about chapter 11, the hall of faith. And we learned that faith is a response to Jesus and, and who he is and what he has done. So our faith is looking forward to something better. And well, because Jesus is better than anything in this world. Also, this faith results in action. <clears throat> Our faith in Jesus moves us to action on behalf of uh, Him and following His commands and teachings. And so we are, we are motivated internally uh, because of Jesus who also is in us and dwelling in us through faith. So chapter 12 starts saying, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, this refers to all those people of faith that were mentioned in chapter 11, as well as the many others that are referred to there, but not mentioned by name. The image here in the beginning of Hebrews 12 is of athletes in a foot race that are they're running all together, running for the finish line and being urged on by the crowd around them. Listen again to verses 1 and 2 with this in mind. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, 
and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Let me lead us in a word of prayer before we delve into this. Lord God, we ask that your spirit would move our minds and our hearts now to understand your word, but not only understand it, but to ingest it, and that your truth would become a part of our reality as we run after you, Jesus, the race that you have set before us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the author of Hebrews paints this picture here for us who follow Jesus in faith like we are athletes running a race. And actually, Jesus is the finish line. So that's the image. And it it might actually help us to even think of that this race is more like a relay race. So where those who have finished their uh, their part of the race and have handed off the baton to us Uh, And they're now watching and encouraging and cheering us on because we are now running the race with the baton in our hands. You know, I bet most of us, at least once in life, have uh, participated in some kind of running race, um, whether it was in an official competition or maybe with just some friends and we just said, hey, let's see who gets there first, you know, and then we all run to try to get there first. And as a kid, my friends and I often would race to get somewhere uh, first, either on feet or on, by foot or on our bikes. We would also race in that way. But one memory of racing stands out from all the others in my mind. Uh, I think I was in sixth grade at the time um, for this memory, and the elementary schools in our towns uh, had organized this one-day event Uh, It was a track and field competition uh, for just elementary schools. We didn't have track teams or things like that, but it was just a one-day competition. And so each elementary school um, gave the kids this goal to uh, reach, and it kind of helped us, I guess, do more exercise in our gym classes. And so it was a competition to see who could represent the school. You know, they'd take the best kids for each uh, event. And so I was good enough to represent our school in the two events, in high jump and the 440-yard dash. So my memory of of racing uh, was of the 440-yard dash, not so much the high jump. So 440 yards, just to let you know, is uh, it was once around the track. Uh, and this is a current, uh, current day picture of the track I raced on in Chelmsford, Massachusetts, my hometown. Harrington Elementary School, you can see, is just uh, next to the track. And that was the sc- my school, my elementary school. And then right next to it, where the track was actually located on the property for the high school, that's where I went to high school as well. Now, my friend and I had, all, had both been chosen to be representatives of our school in, for the 440-yard dash. And so we were... Um, going to race together. And so I remember we, the, before the race, we gathered with all the other boys and girls, if they had made it, uh, it was co-ed, and we lined up at the starting line. And I was next to my friend, and, and they, we started running all together at the beginning of the race. And as we were going around the first curve of the track, my friend felt some pain I don't know if it was a cramp or whatever, but he started to lag back. So being a good buddy, I stayed with him, and we ended up being the last two runners in the pack. And then as we started to turn the go around the second curve of the track toward the finish line then, uh, my buddy said, hey, I'm not going to be able to run, so you go ahead, you know, go for it. And so I put on the steam, and I started running as fast as I could, and it was exhilarating because I remember passing people on the left and the right. I was weaving in and out, and I was making it toward the front of the pack as I saw the finish line getting closer and closer. And uh, I ended up coming in fourth place, so I didn't get a ribbon at all. Uh, fourth place doesn't get anything. And uh, I, I had made my move too late in the race in order to come in first, second, or third. This because I didn't have any running strategy at all. Uh, I I hung back too long. 
Well, this memory came to me when I was studying these first two verses of Hebrews 12, because they, these verses provide instruction on how we can run with endurance the race that is set before us as followers of Jesus. It is a running strategy, which I didn't have in this race that I had that came to mind. Verses 1 and 2 contain one exhortation for us as followers of Christ, but it also carries two instructions on how we are to carry out this exhortation. The exhortation to us is, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And then there are two instructions in this sentence on how we are to run with endurance. And the first is translated as, let us also, let, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. And a more literal translation of this uh, would say, laying aside every weight. And I stress this because laying is a participle, and that participle modifies the one verb in this sentence, which verses 1 and 2 make. Um, and that verb is, let us run with endurance. So laying aside every weight. So the, and then the second instruction about running with endurance is looking to Jesus. Again, another participle. Simply put, we as followers of Jesus are exhorted to run with endurance the race set before us by one, laying aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and two, looking to Jesus. This exhortation with these two instructions are then more fully explained throughout the rest of this chapter, chapter 12. So to run with endurance means not to waver, uh, to be steady, to not give up the race, or to quit, we could say. This letter was written to Christians, as we've said before, uh, with a Jewish background, and they were facing hardships and persecutions by the larger Jewish community and others as well. And the author of Hebrews is encouraging them, as he has periodically throughout the letter. Uh, he's appealing to them not to give up, uh, but stay the course with Jesus, with faith in Jesus. In 1992, the Summer Olympic Games were held in Barcelona, Spain. One of the runners in the 400 meter race was an English athlete named Derek Richmond. And he had trained for years to compete in the Olympics. But while sprinting in a qualifying heat, he suddenly pulled a hamstring and he crumpled to the track in pain. But determined to go on, Derek got himself back up uh, to, on his feet and he was hobbling toward the finish line. Uh, when his father uh, scaled the retaining wall and jumped onto the track and before anyone could stop him, his father went over to his son uh, and grabbed him and put his arm around his shoulder and the young runner leaned on his father's shoulder and he staggered to complete the race. The entire crowd cheered the two men on. And when they crossed the finish line, it was as if the runner and his father and all the spectators had accomplished this task together. It was an amazing experience. And the writer of Hebrews urges us to run the race of faith and persevere to the end. Following the example of the others that have run before us, of running with perseverance, but ultimately of Christ who endured the cross. Uh, Christ himself is there helping us in this race that he has set before us and helping us get and cross the finish line where he is also uh, there with us. The race set before you and me is our life, the life that God has graciously given us. And we are to run this race with endurance following Jesus Christ because he himself inspires us to persevere to the end. Verse 3 says in chapter 12, Consider him who endured from, who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. See, our endurance 
develops from laying aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. This is the first instruction on how we are to run with endurance. You see, our endurance is challenged by the things of life that weigh us down. And that could be anything, really. It's maybe not even something that's wrong, but just something that's there that is causing us to hold back, to not persevere in faith following Jesus. And this would be like the image here is trying to run with a, some heavy backpack on. You would try to run with a heavy backpack on. It's horrible. Or trying to run a race with a rope tied around your waist and with weights dragging on the ground behind you. Now, we may do something like this for training, you know, to, to build strength. But it would be ridiculous to do this in a race that we're trying to run. Um, we run the race of life with endurance by laying aside anything that weighs us down, uh, anything that hinders us from following after Jesus. So when you think of this, does something come to mind? If something did come to mind, then lay it aside. Put it away. It may be a relationship that came to mind that's weighing you down or a hobby that you're obsessed with, or an addiction that you have, or maybe a bad habit, or, or a pursuit of a dream that's pulling you away from Christ. If something came to mind, then lay it aside, which means just do away with it. Get rid of it. Don't mess with it anymore. And that will help us run with endurance. Now, we are also told here that we are to lay aside sin that clings so easily to us. And this means we are to then identify these sins that we continue to struggle with and lay them aside in Christ Jesus because we cannot do this outside of His Holy Spirit enabling us to do this. And this process enables us then to run after Jesus with endurance. Keep out of your life anything that would crowd Christ out of your heart. Endurance is especially hard, though, when life becomes difficult for whatever reason. Verses 4 through 11 are an encouragement, then, to us, for they challenge us to see the Lord's love even in the midst and because of these difficult circumstances that we face in life. Listen again to verses 4 through 7. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. <clears throat> and have you forgotten the ex exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by Him. For the Lord disciplines the one He loves and chastises every son whom He receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? The process of laying aside every weight and sin which clings so closely involves the Lord's discipline of us, his children. And discipline means to train. And often training requires rebuke and correction and which could be punishment or accepting the consequences for our actions effective training and helps us to improve to get stronger to do things that we could do now that we couldn't do before uh, for example at the end of 2018 so that's about over a year and a half ago i made a decision that i was i wanted to get in better shape um, and so I decided that I would start doing push-ups two or three times a week. Now, I decided this because I used to do push-ups years ago. And then it had been years I had stopped doing that, got lazy, and thus I was out of shape. So now at the end of 2018, I said, i, I, I got to start this again. So I started to do this uh, push-ups. And uh, I remember the first time, I've, I've kept a record, 
And I went back and looked, and I, I remember though clearly the first time I got down to do push-ups, I could only do around 10 push-ups. Um, and, and then I did three reps. I always try to do three reps, which just means I try to do as many as I can three times in a row, and then that's my workout. And I could only do a total of 22 push-ups, uh, three reps that first time. And I was so sore the following days after that, um, and it, was, it wasn't very much fun. Uh, actually, doing push-ups isn't very much fun overall. And so, but now, some over a year and a half later, in 2020, um, I can do up to 60 push-ups in one time. And this week, I just hit a new record. I, I can do up to 150 in three reps. And so, my endurance has grown over this time through discipline and training, which what discipline simply means. And when life gets really hard, we are to remember the truth that the Lord disciplines those He loves. He loves us. And so He allows these difficulties to come into our life. And, and it's only because the Lord loves us. And He, in the process, is molding us, shaping us to be more like His Son, Jesus. And the more we are like Jesus, the more we will run with endurance because for Jesus himself endured the cross, despising the shame of it. So we are like Christ with endurance. As James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 put it, Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. God allows difficult situations to occur using them for the good of His children, whom He loves dearly. As Hebrews chapter 12, verses 10 and 11 explain, He disciplines us for our good, that we may share His holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Our endurance in running the race set out before us develops from laying aside every weight and sin that clings to us so closely. But this can't be done separately by itself. It has to be done along with the second instruction we're given in this text. So we run with endurance also by looking to Jesus. Looking to Jesus means fixing our attention on Jesus, uh, focusing on Him, or as the NIV puts it, fixing our eyes, our eyes on Jesus, like we're looking at the finish line and focused on there. We are running this marathon race of life and our eyes are fixed on Jesus because we are following Him. <laughs> we're not following anybody else, so we're, we have to keep looking to Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2 describes then who Jesus is and what He did, saying, The founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We run after Jesus with endurance by looking to Him, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Jesus is the founder of our faith, which means Jesus is the creator, the author, the originator of our faith, of faith, period. If it wasn't for Jesus, we couldn't have faith because He is the one who originated it. He's the founder of it. And faith is simply and profoundly trust and belief. Adam and Eve were given the gift of faith in God when they were given the choice either to obey or disobey the command that God had given them in the Garden of Eden. And they chose to distrust and disobey. And then all their descendants, 
they themselves and all their descendants since, all of mankind, are born with the inclination then to disobey. No one is good, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. A saving faith is not possible without Jesus coming and living and dying and rising again as Lord of all. Jesus provides us with this choice which we wouldn't have without him, either to remain sinful and rebellious against the Lord God and disobey his commands, or to trust in and follow Jesus as Lord and Savior, and then experience the forgiveness and the salvation and the reconciliation to God through Christ Jesus and our faith in him. As Ephesians 2.8 explains, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Even the faith that we choose to have in Jesus is given to us as a gift from God in Christ Jesus himself. Because Jesus, in Jesus we have the opportunity to place our faith in him. Without Jesus, we could not have the saving faith. Looking to Jesus gives us endurance to run the race because he endured the cross for the joy that was set before him, as we're told in Hebrews 12 too. So what was this joy that was set before Christ? Well, the joy of demonstrating the love of God, the joy of providing salvation and forgiveness to those who would trust in him as Lord, the joy of reconciling people back to God. This is the joy that was set before Christ Jesus. Looking to Jesus gives us endurance to run the race of life, as Pastor Paul taught us from chapter 11 last Sunday, that faith is looking forward to Jesus, who is better than anything in this world. Jesus is better, and we are looking forward to being with him forever and ever. And so, when, and on likewise, if we, wa- we will waver and stumble and fall down and quit the race when we take our eyes off Jesus. Last Sunday afternoon during our weekly life group facilitator powwow, just simply uh, our life group facilitators uh, gather together on Zoom um, to review the week before and see what we can do to improve and then also plan and talk about the upcoming week's life group. And so this means that they discuss the um, sermon that was preached on Sunday, like they will do this this afternoon about this message. Um, but last week they were doing it about Pastor Paul's message on faith. And how does this apply to us? And so as we were discussing faith, uh, Tony in, who is one of the facilitators on Friday, uh, one of the Friday groups, um, shared with us that this story um, came to mind from the scriptures. And it's the time when Jesus was with his disciples in a boat crossing the Sea of Galilee. Um, And this is recorded in three of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so the story goes where they were crossing and and this sudden storm came up. um, And Jesus, this is all while Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat. And the waves grew and the boat was being tossed around and the waves were breaking over and, and it was in danger of being swamped. The disciples thought so, being swamped and overturned. And so they were super afraid for their lives. And so they went over to Jesus who was sleeping and woke him up and they said, Master, Master, we're going to drown. And Jesus just stood up and he rebuked the wind and the waves and the storms then suddenly subsided and all was calm. And then he turned to his disciples and he asked them, where is your faith? See, the disciples had turned their eyes on the storm. They were focusing on the storm and they were afraid. And Jesus taught them in that moment that he has the power to calm the storms. And so they need to look to him and trust in him and not take their eyes off him. Looking to Jesus gives us endurance to run the race because we will have hope in Christ, not only in what he can do and what he has done, but
But it, what he will do and is doing in his establishing his kingdom that will not be shaken. And this is what the last half of chapter 12 is all about. And verses 28 and 29 sum it up nicely, saying, Therefore let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. When we are fixing our eyes on Jesus, we have hope in His kingdom that will be established forever in the new heaven and the new earth. You know, brothers and sisters, the best is yet to come. So no matter what you're facing, it's only temporary because even there's way better coming our way and is uh, being set up for us who follow Him, the Lord Jesus. And so as we keep looking to Jesus, we will run after Jesus with endurance because we're, we know where we're running to, who we're running to, and what He has prepared for us in the end. There is an old song that says it well. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Corey Ten Boom lived through the hellish life of Nazi concentration camps, a place where hope was lost for most people. But Corey survived. Uh, and to tell her story of her enduring faith and unwavering hope in God. She saw the face of evil up close and personal. She saw the most inhumane ways that people could do on other people. And when she came out of it all, this horrible experience, she said this, I quote, If you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at Christ, you'll be at rest. Corey Ten Boom ran the race that was set before her with endurance because she was looking to Jesus. What are you looking at in your life? Are you looking at the world and all of its dangers that it has possibly for, for you? Are you gazing at yourself, fixated on yourself, trying to depend on yourself to solve your own problems and figure them out? find your own answers? Or are you looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of faith itself, our Savior and Lord? In this uncertain world, we got to be looking to Jesus because He is the hope of the world, our only hope. When your world is falling apart, trust in Jesus to hold it together. The race God has set before us is life itself. Run this race with endurance, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, and so that way we can persevere to the end of our race. And we'll do this by laying aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and looking to Jesus and, what, and knowing what he, who He is and what He has done because of his love for us. As 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 encourages us, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Life is a marathon. And we don't know, each of us don't know how long our race will go, but Hebrews 12 gives us a running strategy so that we can run to the end of our race with perseverance, following Jesus all along the way, and knowing and expecting and anticipating that Jesus himself is our prize and our reward. Let's pray. Lord God, we are grateful for this truth and encouragement and exhortation to run after you with, with endurance. Lord, we confess that we fall short often. We do waver, and you know that. But Lord, we, we acknowledge and thank you for the discipline that you're giving us through each situation that you allow into our life, whether it be sickness, 
or tragedy or injustice even or violence done onto us. Lord, we don't, we don't look forward to that. We don't ask for that. But Lord, we know and have trust that through that, you are working for our good, your children. And you are building endurance for us. Lord, we pray that we would be faithful to you, our Lord and our God, our Savior and our friend. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Cornerstone, we'll see you next week. God bless. Thanks, Jeff, for that message. And let us respond with the song, Lay Me Down. And remember that he calls us to run with endurance towards him, laying aside all hindrances, and that we can keep our eyes fixed on him. With this heart, with this heart, open wide from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sacrifice. And with these hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring. A sacrifice. I will bring a sacrifice. I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Letting go, letting go of my pride, giving up all my rights. Take this life and let it shine. Letting go, letting go of my pride, giving up all my rights. Take this light and let it shine, shine, shine. Take this light and let it shine. And I lay me down on my own. I belong to you alone. Lay Will be my joy, and it will be my joy to say, Your will, Your way, and it will be my joy to say, Your will, Your way, and it will be my joy to say, Your will, Your way.
I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. Whoa, hand on my heart, this much is true. There's no life apart from you. Lay me down, lay me down. Hi, my name is Kathleen, and I'll be going over this week's announcements. First, let's go over the verse of the month. Please read this aloud with me. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Colossians 1, 10 to 11. Next, our missionaries for this week are Tim and Faith Brandon, who are serving in Brazil through a Christian camp ministry. Please pray for them to have many opportunities to make disciples of Jesus. Also, deacon nomination process for 2021 has started. From now on until August 2nd, please take the time to nominate someone from our congregation. You can email Mike Yu, the English Congregation Committee member, with your nominations. Next, although our in-person VBS scheduled for this month has been canceled, we will instead have a virtual one, August 13 to 15, from 3.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Registration is open, and please consider volunteering. All information is available on our website. And do you need prayer? Share your prayer requests by clicking on this image on our website, and our leadership will pray for them. Lastly, come hang out with us after worship at 1 p.m. Go to the website for the link to join, or come to catch up, encourage one another, eat lunch together, and be the body of Christ. And that is all for this week. Join me as I now close our time in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day for gathering us here that we can worship together. Thank you for your love, for continuing to invite us each and every day to join you in your good work. Continue to show us how we can love and serve those around us well. Help us to live each and every day in step with the Spirit. May everything we do be glorifying to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. Lord, heal me from the inside out. Lord, let justice